These weight loss drugs, the so-called GLP-1 receptor agonists, seem to cure, well, <laughs> almost everything. So could it be that they slow down the aging process as well? Well, there's a big debate currently going on in longevity science about firstly, whether they do slow down aging, and secondly, how they do so. So it might be, uh, the first idea, is that they slow down aging by causing that weight loss. We know that fat cells, and in particular the visceral fat cells that bunch up between your organs, they're the things that give you a beer belly as you get older, they emit a bunch of inflammatory molecules, essentially accelerate aging throughout the body. It could also be that they have a more direct effect on the aging process. Maybe they hit inflammation in a more direct way, maybe they have some other biological effect we're yet to uncover, and slow down aging that way. And that might sound like an absolutely wild idea, but we do know of a number of different drugs that slow down aging uh, in the lab. There's a drug called rapamycin that you might have heard of, or um, there are also a number of diabetes drugs like metformin or canagliflozin that you also might have come across in this context. The problem is that doing a trial on one of these drugs would take a very, very long time. Uh, it might even take decades if you were to start it early enough. And we'd have to watch and see if people got ill less, uh, died less frequently when they were taking those drugs to prove that it slowed down the aging process. And that's why these measures of biological age, like epigenetic age tests, are so exciting. And we found that people who score higher on these epigenetic clocks, i.e. they're older than their chronological age, tend to be at higher risk of disease and tend to die sooner than those who have a lower epigenetic age than their chronological age. So that means these do seem to have some interesting predictive value and they're fascinating research tools. But I think on an individual basis, they're not yet ready for the prime time. You can spend a couple of hundred dollars and send off a sample of spit or blood and have your epigenetic age measured. But the consumer kits aren't very well regulated. We don't really know how accurate they are. And when it comes to doing trials with these things, even in a research setting, we don't really know what changes in this epigenetic age means yet. But nonetheless, it does increase our confidence that these drugs are doing something to the aging process one way or another. The other important caveat here is that this study was done in patients with HIV, which we know accelerates the aging process in various ways. So this isn't necessarily representative of the regular population. But nonetheless, these are really interesting preliminary results. It's very common for scientists to test something in an accelerated aging model in the lab, for example. You can get mice that have these particular genetic changes that mean they age more quickly. And if you find those promising results, it's not a slam dunk, it doesn't mean your drug's definitely gonna work, but it's an, an interesting hint to show that maybe you should be looking a little bit deeper. There's a bit, a bit more, there's something to investigate here. And I really think that this shows us it's high time for a human trial of some of these GLP-1 agonists to see if they can indeed slow down the aging process in humans. We could get a bunch of people, you know, follow them for a few years and see if they get diseases more slowly, if they, if they age more slowly in various different ways. And we could also try this with drugs like rapamycin and metformin and the other uh, sort of top candidates that we have as longevity drugs. So I think it's high time that we just try some of these things in humans. We've got so many promising candidates, so many fascinating hints like this study, that really, we just need to try these things.